How to Aim Down Sight, aka ADS, in Godot. Start with the first person character controller. I have a tutorial for that by the way. Right click on the camera node and add a spatial node as a child. Rename it to hand. Move hand forward so it's roughly in a spot where a hand would be when holding a gun. Now let's make the gun by right clicking on hand and adding a mesh instance node. Give it a new cube shape and adjust its size and shape so it resembles a gun. Feel free to use your own gun model if you have one, but if you don't then don't worry about it. Next right click on hand and attach a new script. Call it whatever you want. In the script, we need to keep track of the gun's normal position and its ADS position. To do that, write export var default position colon vector3 and export var ADS position colon vector3. Export variables are exactly the same as regular variables, but they can be changed in the editor. I'll be showing you what I mean in just a second. We'll also write const ADS underscore lerp equals 20 which controls how quickly the gun switches between the default and ADS positions. Adjust accordingly. Return to the 3D view, and if you click on the hand node, you'll notice that we now have a default position parameter and an ADS position parameter in the inspector, which correspond to the export variables we just created. Click on the camera node, click on the camera preview button, then click on the hand node, and under transform, adjust its position until it's in a good spot. This will be our default gun position, so go ahead and copy the X, Y, and Z coordinates over to the default position parameter. Next, we'll create the ADS position. Change the X to 0 so it's exactly in the middle, and then mess with the Y and Z values until it's in a good spot. Copy these coordinates over to the ADS position parameter as well. Then, we'll just set the gun back to the default position by copying the default coordinates back over to the translation. In the script, we'll create a new process function, func underscore process delta, then go to project and project settings, and in the input map tab, make sure you have a key binding called fire2. If you don't, go ahead and make one now. Return to the script and write if input.isActionPressed fire2, transform.origin equals transform.origin.linear interpolate, ads position, comma, ads lerp times delta. So when you press the fire2 button, the gun will smoothly transition, or interpolate, between its current position and the ADS position we set earlier, and it will do so at the ADS lerp speed that we defined earlier as well. Then write else, so if we let go of fire2, transform.origin equals transform.origin.linear interpolate, default position, comma, ADS lerp times delta, which brings the gun back to the default position. Run the game, and when you press fire2, the gun moves to the ADS position, and when you let go, it returns to the default position. But maybe you want the gun to zoom in a bit when aiming down sights. To do that, return to the character controller scene, and if you click on the camera node, in the inspector you'll notice a parameter called FOV, or field of view. Moving this slider will either widen or narrow the FOV, which will change the zoom of the camera. We'll be using this to create our zoom effect. Return to the script, and first we need to create a reference to our camera node, which is a parent of the hand node where our script is located. To reference a parent of a node, one good way to do it is by using node paths. Write export var camera underscore path colon node path, as well as var camera colon camera. Then in the ready function, delete pass and write camera equals get node camera path. If you click on the hand node, you'll now see a camera path parameter in the inspector. You can click on a sign and select the camera node in the window that pops up in order to create the reference. This is good because it's much easier to reassign the path this way if you make changes to your node structure later on than having to manually rewrite the path in the code itself. Next, return to the script and let's define what our different FOVs should be. Write var f view equals open close curly brackets and this is called a dictionary. It's a useful way to keep your variables organized as you'll see shortly. In the curly brackets, we're going to create our default FOV by writing default in quotes, then colon, followed by the FOV amount that we want. I went with 70. Then for our ADS FOV, write comma, then ADS in quotes, colon, and the ADS FOV, in my case it's 50. Adjust accordingly. So what we just did is create a default FOV and an ADS FOV all inside of a single variable. If you don't use a dictionary, then you would have to create a variable for the default FOV and another variable for the ADS FOV, which means extra lines of code. It's a small change, but if you want to clean up your code a bit, a dictionary is one way to do it. But moving on, in the process function, we'll write camera.fov equals lerp camera.fov f view and to get the ADS value, we just write ADS in quotes inside of two square brackets, comma, ADS lerp times delta. 
This interpolates between the camera's current FOV and the ADS FOV we defined earlier, and it will do so at the ADS lerp speed. Then under else, write camera.fov equals lerp camera.fov, comma f view default, comma ADS lerp times delta. And this interpolates the FOV back to the default FOV when you let go of fire two. Run the game, and now when you aim down sights, the camera zooms in, and when you return to normal, the camera zooms out. And that is how you do ADS in Godot. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and bell to support the channel. If you'd like to support the channel directly, consider using my Amazon affiliate links down in the description the next time you buy something off of Amazon, or you can send me a donation by buying me a coffee by following the links down below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, have a nice day.